<laughs> hey guys and gals, your old pal Goliath here with an October spectacular festival for Goliath's rants, reviews, and revivals. You know what? A lot has been going on. We're going to talk about the COVID, the sadness. No, we're not. We're going to talk about The Walking Dead. <laughs> A great show created by Frank Darabont and Robert Kirkman. The Walking Dead, or as AMC likes to put it, AMC presents The Walking Dead. Now, I love The Walking Dead for many, many years, and for many of you that know and follow us, I rant about The Walking Dead so much because I'm passionate about it. There's The Walking Dead, there's Fear the Walking Dead, and now Into the Beyond The Walking Dead, which takes place in the 10-year uh, sequel series of after Rick was taken by the special group. Now, a lot of has been going on since they took sabbatical back in March and the show was put on hiatus like many other shows. The season premiere of the new season, or continuation of the season, whatever you want to call it, was a little mind-blowing, a little bit of a letdown, but all in all, I was super excited for both shows, for Beyond the Walking Dead and the Return of the Walking Dead. And next week is Return of the Fear of the Walking Dead. So we're going to talk about the triangle of the Walking Dead that apparently has been created. Now, the show itself has been going for about... I think it has been about 10 years now. It's been going for quite a while. Now the show followed Rick Grimes, Daryl, Carol, Michonne, The Kingdom, Hilltop, Oceanside, Alexandria. It, the show just kept going. Originally the show started following Rick Grimes, a sheriff who was injured in the time of, uh, well, doing duty. And he was put into a medicated coma. Now, when he awoke out of the coma, he had no idea what was going on. Hospital was empty. There were bodies everywhere. The hospital looked like a war zone. So he just thought, well, something must have happened. And then he saw a door. Don't open. Dead inside. Any door that's labeled that, you should automatically know in horror movie 101. You don't open or go near the bad door. So he found out, apparently, that there were things called walkers. And they were literally reincarnated dead bodies. And we learned from the CDC that it invades the mind like uh, meningitis. Shuts the brain off, but reanimates the brain stem. So literally, the you never comes back. You are literally a flesh bag eating monster with just a nonstop appetite. Fast forward years later, we learn about the whispers and the army that walks among the dead, which I thought was brilliant. How do you hide from something? in plain sight and camouflage. So they would skin the walkers and wear their face and body parts as camouflage and walk amongst them. You had the guardians, the protectors, beta and alpha. I don't want to be a guardian because you literally, your job is to go out, get walkers and to pretty much train them. That is a horrifying job for anybody. You have alpha who was literally a sociopathic woman. Look, I believe that many things go on in the world, but that is just way too much power for anybody to have, an army of the undead. Beta was her basically loyal lapdog who followed her around and did everything she said because she saved him. We turns out later on in the show that, well, spoiler alert, he was some kind of famous musician or something like that. I didn't recognize him. Many people on Facebook said he's a musician of some type, but the battle scene between the Horde and the others of Alexandria, Oceanside, I was a little let down because I was expecting like some glorious fire-written doomsday battle with trees burning in the background and buildings being overrun with walkers. That's not what we got. We got some kind of thrown together, in my opinion, ending because watching Beta go down the way he did, you know, basically Negan, the one guy we all thought was the complete bastard of the world, came out to be a semi-decent human being. He turns out he was actually trying to do good by doing bad. How do you make the world a better place? You make, you, you make yourself the ultimate enemy. And Negan did that. He made everyone hate him so much that they wanted to unify against him, which kind of worked, but he also had so much fear going on that no one dared challenge him. So he kind of made a better bad place. He hid in one of my trucks and machine gunned a bunch of my men down and I brought him home safe and sound and I fed him spaghetti. So Negan actually was working with them, basically working with the whispers and tricking them into believing. He got close to Alpha and <laughs> decapitated her. Beautiful moment, by the way. And from there, he tried to make better. He thought he would run away or hide or get eaten. So long story short, Negan prevails to be a sort of good guy. So Negan betrays and distracts Beta and out of nowhere, Daryl slices him in the side and then plunges those big buoy knives, he always has them, right down Beta's face which in and of itself should have killed any human being. But somehow, miraculously, Beta didn't scream. Beta didn't freak out. Beta didn't fight. 
he just got enveloped by the horde and ripped apart which to me i was like that's how beta this big giant guy goes down not fighting kicking and screaming not like going nuts but with a whisper kind of poetic anticlimactic you know but long story short i was a little upset i thought it was going to be a two-part crazy episode but all in all guys i'm happy the walking dead is back i want to just jump real quick into beyond the walking dead which really was a unique and different take because each version of the walking dead i feel plays a little bit of a role in how society actually really would interact with the dead so the walking dead basically is like what hollywood presumes would happen with people fear the walking dead in my opinion really is like what normal people would do like how normal everyday people would react to the dead coming back to life and now into the world of the walking dead or beyond i mean is kind of what i feel the government would do if they kind of just took over during the apocalypse because basically a lot of groups uh, were being told that they were going to be led around. Here's the organization. They were going around to settlements and taking the most powerful, intellectual, and strongest members of those groups and then saying, well, we'll bring you provisions, but we're going to take your top scientists, your top military, your top police, and then get betrayed. And I was like, ooh, this is kind of hitting close to home. Long story short on that, though, each little episode, each genre of the series has a different take on it, which is phenomenal. But at the same time, they are in and of themselves connected because we know that Fear the Walking Dead is connected to The Walking Dead through one of its original members and cast members. Now, into Beyond The Walking Dead, it also connects through Fear the Walking Dead and also to The Walking Dead. So basically, all the shows interact with each other on that 10-year span. Now, are they all going to meet up? Are we going to know that if Rick and his team meets up with the Fear the Walking Dead group? It's a possibility because they're out there in Fear the Walking Dead trying to bring the communities back together and saving the world's populace. Beyond The Walking Dead, uh, who knows? And The Walking Dead, they say they got one more season in them, so I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm looking forward to the next few episodes. What I'm trying to say is, guys, The Walking Dead has become such a beautiful piece of not only cinematic artistry and storytelling, but so much more. Now, with that being said, guys, Robert Kirkman, I know, is not happy because they've divulged away from the comic books a lot because originally what was supposed to happen maybe got pushed or twisted, and that's how always things go. Remember that. Just because you write a story doesn't mean how the story is going to turn out. <laughs> but I know a lot of fans do love and are passionate about The Walking Dead. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoy The Walking Dead, fear The Walking Dead, and into the world of the beyond The Walking Dead. And, guys, I want to say I'm sorry that We've been off the air for a while, but COVID has, as many things, messed up a lot. But if anybody has zombies on Apocalypse, you know, bingo somewhere, it is October. I'm just saying, you know, October, zombies, you know, just it could happen, guys. It could really happen. So I hope you guys are looking forward to the next Goliath RR. We've got a lot coming this month from yarn work and photos and so much more, guys. Keep yourselves posted. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on the next Goliath's Rants, Reviews, and Revival. Have a happy Halloween. Wear scary costumes. Get lots of candy. Also, I accept candy. I like candy, guys. <laughs> so this is Goliath saying, see you later. And remember, watch out for the walking dead. Bye.